Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Place your bets now. Did the dodgy engine builder gap those piston rings? So if you want to check the ring gap on your piston rings, what tools are you going to need? Well, it's pretty simple. A feeler gauge, and that's it. Now what a feeler gauge actually does it has different measurements printed on each of these tabs and each one of them is a specific thickness accurate to a thousandth of a millimeter and basically we can tell how big the gap is by which one of these fits in the gap so what is the job of the piston ring gap in the first place well here's a piston ring i prepared earlier and if we imagine this is actually the cylinder now and the piston ring, when it gets hot, it cannot expand outwards because the cylinder is a fixed sort of uh, area. So what the ring actually does is it will expand and this ring gap here will slowly close. If it's too tight, they will actually touch and then they will sort of bend this way and can potentially crack a piston. If they are too loose, then all that turbo boost um, is actually going to leak straight past the piston into the sump and probably out the dipstick tube so you're going to get a lot of blow by and a loss in power so uh, that's pretty much why we have to check these piston rings now let's go and check them out okay so there's absolutely nothing stopping us from removing these piston rings it's actually a very simple process there's a lot of play on these piston rings Obviously, when it's in the actual cylinder wall, there wouldn't be play because the, the cylinder wall would be compressing these rings. But to remove them, you basically push the side with the gap and then you can gently lift this side and slowly just wiggle it around the piston like so. And there's absolutely no resistance there stopping that from coming out so that's how we remove them obviously i've kept i've marked these pistons so that's piston four arrow is pointing towards the timing belt so um this is piston one and it says t timing belt with the arrows pointing so i know what orientation they come in to check the piston ring gap it's very simple uh, you actually insert the piston ring into the cylinder wall like so very gently and as you can see the gap now has begun to actually close and then you rotate the piston ring to get it into the wall now I'm going to use this to square the piston ring and now it looks silly but uh, you know it's actually designed for this it's actually red line assembly lube people use them when they actually want to square off the piston ring you can use your piston um, I'm not going to though now, according to the Toyota workshop manual, the gap between these two parts of the piston ring should be between 0.33 millimeters and 0.55 millimeters. Point, so, 0.533 millimeters, just to, this is the absolute top end of our piston ring gap. And it's not fitting. That's fine, we can go all the way down to 0.33 mil. Here you have 0.33 mil. If this one doesn't fit either, then it's completely out of spec. Oh, it does fit. It's within spec. So I've done the top end and the lower end of the um, accepted tolerance. And the lower end is actually fitting in. So it's within spec. Now, I'm going to try and just find the most accurate reading I can. So it's a bigger gap than 0 0.33 mil. I'm going to go now up to 0 0.356, which is the next size up on this feeler gauge. And I'll keep going until one didn't fit. It's bigger than 0 0.356. And that's not fitting. So 0.457 millimeter is our final piston ring gap.
the results are in. Were you expecting them to have gapped those piston rings? Well, I wasn't expecting them to be within spec, but they are. They've been deburred. They're all pretty uniform in the clearances. So at least some effort has gone into gapping those piston rings. It's just a shame that uh, all the work either side of those piston rings has been sort of skimped. But uh, it's good news for me, really. We can reuse them without too much hassle or further effort. Now with the build moving forward, um, everything I need to get this Corolla on the road is currently on its way to me, minus the timing belt. So there's gonna be a lot of videos on the way and uh, we did have a little scare with the cracked crankshaft, but I'm happy to say TCB have come in and saved the day. Uh, Paul especially, he actually found me a really good condition crank and uh, I'm really you know, thankful to them. But uh, I'll update you all on that in the next video and I'll show you all the things that I've bought to finish off this engine. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.